So the Shri practice is something that has um, developed over the last 18 years of my practice and teaching. And it is rooted in the Vedic tradition overall. So incorporates uh, Vedic astrology, Ayurvedic wisdom, Vedanta wisdom, which is based in the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, um, the knowledge of Vastu or Vedic architecture, which can be applied to the physical body. And then in terms of the yoga practice, it is rooted in the understanding of Soma. So I have a few videos that you can check out about what is the Soma Nectar, which is the consort to the more often discussed um, Agni or fire, or what can also be seen as the Kundalini Shakti, which rises up from the root or the tailbone uh, up the spine as part of a spiritual maturation process. The Soma Nectar is the consort of that uh, fire. So where the Kundalini Shakti is all about the transformation that comes through heat and movement and um, force and will and desire, the Soma Nectar is the quality of nourishment which drips down from the top of the head and pours down the spine. In fact, the subtle body is meant to be nourished by soma nectar so that a kundalini process can happen uh, with ease, more naturally, um, and more blissfully. So the soma-based practices of yoga are those practices which I consider to be more mature approach to yoga. This is where we end up, no matter where we start in yoga. So if you start with an athletic approach, um, you will ultimately end up uh, craving and settling into a practice that is more uh, slow in nature, more inward oriented in nature, so emphasizing what is known in Sanskrit as pratyahara, the inward turning of the mind and senses, more meditative or contemplative in nature. And so the Sri practice, what I call spinal release yoga, or supreme release yoga or soma release yoga is rooted in the understanding that what we need today is more emphasis on soma, on nourishment, on slowing down, on discovering a deep sense of inner satisfaction that allows us to live from a place in which rather than being motivated by insecurity, by instability, by a sense of lack, we feel fulfilled and deeply satisfied and then can live on purpose dharmically and fully. So in this sense, the uh, Sri practice is all about softening, discovering deep inner satisfaction, and letting go and surrendering. The word for surrender that I love in Sanskrit is sharanagati. Sounds like surrender. And this is all from the Soma principle. The one uh, key way that we do this in the Sri practice is with uh, poses that look much like restorative yoga poses, but are so much more than that. So we do a slow, most of the time, a slow practice um, that emphasizes softening and releasing of the muscles that connect to the vertebrae. So we release the muscles along the spine, what are referred to as core muscles um, or the central channel of the body because the spine is the conduit of soma. And the spine is the conduit of the supreme experience of the self-satisfied self. And so rather than working to um, uh, make the ligaments more flexible or to strengthen muscles in a conventional way, what we're doing is reaching into and releasing tension and blockages along the spine in a few key areas the tailbone, all the muscles connected to the tailbone at the root 
okay? Then the sacrum and all the muscles connected to the sacrum, which are behind your abdominal organs. Moving up the spine, we release muscles attached to the lumbar, which includes the uh, mysterious, important, chronically tight psoas muscle. And then we move up to release the muscles that attach to your spine through the rib cage. These muscles are behind your heart and lungs, and this area of the heart is one of the key seats of soma nectar. So we do spend a lot of time emphasizing the heart release and the pelvic release with the psoas opening in between as being that release which integrates uh, those openings into the world. And then moving up the spine, we release tension in the muscles through the neck and throat. So uh, attached to the vertebrae of the neck, and this allows us to speak the truth, to free up our ability to uh, feel safe and comfortable to express ourselves. And then we release all the way up into and through the skull and the head where we get a true um, transformation of the ability to live wisely to master knowledge in a real living way, not in a theoretical way. So this moving along the spine with a deep release is very key to the Shri practice, but isn't the whole practice. The practice, I call it deep, but please understand that deep from the Shri perspective means deeply blissful, deeply releasing, deeply softening, not deep in terms of pushing and forcing the body into extreme angles. In fact, we back the body away from extreme angles because what I have found is that in extreme angles, yogis are often pushing past the point of healing and transformation, actually avoiding deep release and healing and transformation that can happen when we back out of extreme poses into poses that might look on the outside like very little is happening, and yet so much magic is actually happening on the inside. We discover the self. We discover the self-satisfied self, which is the true purpose of yoga. So if you were to look at photographs of a Sri practice, you would probably see a lot of yoga blankets. You might see a yoga therapist or yoga teacher holding the student's body, supporting the student's body, or even anchoring the student's body. You might see a lot of closed eyes and um, it's not maybe the most uh, yoga magazine photogenic kind of practice. And really, that is not what yoga is about anyway. So if you're interested in learning more, I do have some online courses and some in-person courses. And you can find out about all of those uh, in various places, including my Instagram bio link, my website, yogawithkaya.com. Um, or you can email me anytime at kaya at yogawithkaya.com. Swagatam.